Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy and today we will talk about the internal features of the heart In the previous video we studied the external features of the heart so let's go through them We all know that this is the heart kept in the normal anatomical position if this is the posterior and the this is the anterior part of the body We all know that this is the apex that is the protruding part of the heart towards the left the apex contains the left ventricle so now we know that this is the left side so this is the right side let's talk about the right atrium first this is the right atrium which is containing the inputs from the superior inferior vena cava this is the right ventricle this is the atrioventricular groove carrying the coronary vessels this is the left atrium containing input of the four pulmonary veins and this is the atrioventricular groove once again and this is the left ventricle so now let's begin with talking about the internal features of the right atrium for that we'll open the heart so this and this these two areas basically are constituting the right atrium apart from these two cavities this part of the right atrium that's projecting outwards is known as the auricle it is like ear like projection from the right atrium going towards the left the right atrium basically consists of an anterior rough part and a posterior smooth part and an interatrial septal part let's talk about the anterior rough part first the anterior rough part is basically rough because there are muscles in it called the musculi pectinati these are basically transverse muscular ridges ridges meaning any kind of prominence and transverse meaning horizontal now let's talk about the smooth posterior part also known as the sinus venarum the posterior smooth part containing the entries of the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava at the entry of inferior vena cava there is going to be a rudimentary or eustachian valve however it will not be visible as it is rudimentary function was when in embryo period this valve was necessary to direct the blood flow towards the fossa ovalis so that it can enter the other side then we have the coronary sinus this is the coronary sinus means any kind of space so this is like a space called the coronary sinus which is located between the inferior vena cava and the atrioventricular orifice this is the atrioventricular orifice which means orifice meaning a hole and atrioventricular the hole that is connecting your two atrium and the ventricle this contains the av valve known as the tricuspid valve on the right side it is tricuspid valve remember this with the spellings of tri t r i r i right side all right so this contains the tricuspid valve moreover surrounding the coronary sinus the white line you can see is basically the thebesian valve that is responsible for guarding the coronary sinus there is a muscular ridge inside known as crista terminalis which presents outside as the sulca terminalis the upper part of this ridge consists of your sinoatrial node now let's talk about the interatrial septum this is the interatrial septum this contains your fossa ovalis which is now obviously closed it had a major function in embryonic period this redirected the blood flow towards the left side surrounding margin of the fossa ovalis is known as the limbus ovalis or annulus ovalis that was mostly all for your right atrial features now let's move on to the right ventricle if we get this out of the way the right atrium which is this and this the right atrium as well has a inflowing part which is rough and muscular and an outflowing smooth part known as the infundibulum which basically is pumping out blood flow to your pulmonary trunk to go towards your lungs so always remember the right side is pumping deoxygenated blood towards the lung so there is a once again a rough part which is called the inflowing part where the blood is going to enter and then the outflowing part known as the infundibulum between these two parts lies your supraventricular crest it is a prominence between the two parts of your right atrium So let's talk about the inflowing part. The inflowing part is receiving blood from the right atrium, and it consists of the tuberculae carni, which are basically muscular ridges, muscular bridges, and papillary muscles. 
so it consists of the papillary muscles and on right side since there is the tricuspid valve there are about three papillary muscles the anterior posterior and the septal so it is important to know that from the intramuscular septum the right av bundle branch travels all the way till the, the anterior papillary muscle this is known as the septomarginal band or the moderator band the significance of this band is that it carries the right av bundle branch that we'll talk about in the conducting system moreover there are three papillary muscles that are connected to the corda tendine this is the corda tendine that is connected to the cusps of the atrioventricular or tricuspid valve what is the function of papillary muscles well the function of papillary muscles is to cause the atrioventricular valves to close this valve which is the tricuspid valve as you can see this white structure is the valve it consists of a fibrous ring this you can see is the fibrous ring connected to the fibrous ring are the three cusps the three cusps are attached to the corda tendine the corda tendine are like you can say tissues that are like tendons these corda tendine are basically attached to the three papillary muscles and when the papillary muscle contracts it pulls the corda tendine to close the av valve or the tricuspid valve during ventricular contraction apart from this this is the pulmonary valve through which the blood outflows an important feature of your uh, ventricles is the interventricular septum the upper part of the interventricular septum which is not visible in this model is basically going to be thin and membranous while the lower part of the interventricular septum is going to be thick and muscular moving on let's talk about the left atrium the left atrium is basically mostly smooth in its entirety and it contains the openings of the four pulmonary veins moreover the left ventricle also has a inflowing rough part and a outflowing smooth part or the aortic vestibule covering the aortic valve on the contrary to the right side on the left side there is the av valve known as the bicuspid valve meaning it has only two cusps meaning only two papillary muscles exist in the left ventricle it's also known as the mitral valve so through the mitral valve in the left side comes the oxygenated blood from the lungs received via pulmonary veins and is pumped out through the aortic valve to your entire body since it's pumping blood to the entire body its wall is a lot thicker as you can see three times thicker than the right ventricle as you can see so that was mostly all for the internal features of your four chambers of the heart in the next video we will talk about valves and the conducting system